Let's do an example where we leverage our definition of row vector matrix multiplication via linear combinations to actually calculate an output of this operation. Specifically, let's find the vector B that is equal to X transpose times A, where A is a four by three matrix given with these integer coefficients, and then X is a four by one column vector given with these integer coefficients. For those of you that have been watching the videos throughout, notice that this is the exact same matrix that we use to explore matrix column vector multiplication via linear combinations and matrix column vector multiplication via dot products. I'll link to that in the little call out to the top right hand corner of this video. With that said, we're going to go ahead and calculate B given these two pieces of data. First thing we do is we recall our definition and let's do some analysis before we start. Notice B is going to be X transpose times A. X was a four by one, which means X transpose is a one by four. We said that A was a four by three. The inner dimensions must agree. So the inner dimensions do match up. They quote unquote cancel out and the dimensions of the product is going to be defined by the outer dimension. So in this case, the number of rows of this product is going to be one and the number of columns is going to be three since those dimensions are on the outside. Moreover, we said that in the matrix vector multiplication paradigm, we have two factors. We have the left factor and the right factor and we're training ourselves to think about one of them as a modeling matrix, something that shows up in the modeling process, and the other one is going to be an algebraic worker, a tool to transform the modeling matrix into a more beautiful form from the standpoint of solving linear algebraic problems with it. So in this case, we're thinking about A as our modeling matrix and X as our algebraic worker. Remember, when the modeling matrix shows up on the right side as the right factor, we're going to partition that into rows. So when the modeling matrix shows up on the right, we partition it into rows. We cut it up into rows. When the modeling matrix shows up on the left, we cut it up into columns. In this case, it shows up on the right. We're going to cut that into rows. Now I'm going to do an active recall. Remember, one of the best things about a mathematical problem or an example is that it allows us to test ourselves on the pertinent definitions. We lose that ability if we just go reference back our notes and we copy that straight because we're not testing ourselves. So I always like to encourage my students, when you're doing a problem, test yourself often, write what you think the definition is down, then after you wrote what you think it is, check the actual definition and correct your errors. The more you make mistakes and correct your mistakes, the more robust, the stronger your neural networks will be. So here we go. We're going to take X transpose times A. I'm going to start making a connection here as I test myself. Okay, I remember for sure that matrix column vector multiplication, we take a linear combination of the columns with individual scalars coming from the vector X. In this case, we're on the other side. So here I'm going to take individual coefficients of the vector X. And instead of taking linear combinations of the columns, I'm going to take linear combination of the rows. So this is going to be X1 times row one plus X2 times row two plus dot, 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 dot x m times rho m if i wrote that in summation notation i would guess this is a test the sum from i goes from one to the last row in this case we know that row is number four of x sub i multiplied by the ith row if this is an m by n each row would be one by n let me go ahead and check that that's exactly what i get in my definition Ding, 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 ding. So I'm going to put a little check mark and I'm going to put a smiley face. It's a linear combination of the rows of A with individual scalars coming from the vector X. Now that we have that general definition, let's transform it to our specific problem. In our specific problem, M is equal to four, which means that I can actually write all four sum ends down. This is going to be X1 times the first row of A. So that's when I is one. We move the index vari counter variable up. I equals two. This is X2 times row two plus X3 times row three plus X4 times row four. This is a row chunked piece of information. In other words, this is vectorized. Data is chunked by the entire row vector. Let's go down to the entry by entry version of this. So row one is going to be A11, A12, A13, since this is a one by three. We'll multiply that by X1. Row two is going to be A21, A22, A23. We'll multiply that by X2. Similarly with row three, A31, A32, A33. 
and row four is A41, A42, A43 multiplied by X4. Some students challenge me when they see how much I write on these examples, and they'll say, hey Jeff, if the point of this is to get the answer, why are you showing all this work? Why don't you just skip to the easier part, which is doing the calculation? And that's where I challenge students back. In my experience, the point of an example is not to get the answer. The point of the example is to push my brain to think really hard and to build robust neural networks to encode the idea. So in this example, my goal is not to get to the answer. It's actually quite easy to do. My goal is to encode the underlying ideas in my brain, which means I want to continually test myself on the ideas and really make connections in multiple ways. And you'll notice that I've already done four different types of representations of these ideas as I've been working through. Once I'm here, I can actually use the data that I'm given to start filling this in. Notice x1 times the first row of a. Well, I know what the first row of a is. It's negative 3, 4, 3 x1 is 2, so I'm going to go ahead and just say the first part is 2 times negative 3, 4, 3. The second entry is going to be negative 1, so second entry of x is negative 1. Second row of a is negative 1, 7, 6, so now I'm going to have this plus negative 1 times negative 1, 7, 6. x3 is going to be 5. The third row is going to be 0, 1, 2. x4 is going to be 3. The fourth row is going to be 2, negative 5, negative 2. And now I have the complete definition translated into the data given in the problem. Since I'm doing this by hand, I'm going to go real slow and just go step by step. Here, let's do the first multiplication out. 2 times this row. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So that gives me the first row. Let's go down to the next row. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Let's go down to the third row. 5 times 0 is 0. Times 1 is 5. Times 2 is 10. And let's go down to the last row. 3 times 2 is 6. Times negative 5 is negative 15. Times negative 2 is negative 6. So now I've actually done the calculation out. Again, I'm doing this by hand, so I like to be real methodical about it and do one step at a time. Uh, when we're looking at negative 6 plus 1, it's negative 5. 8 plus negative 7 is 1, negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12. Now we'll add that linear combination to the next row. So I'm going to take this vector and add it to the second to last vector. Negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. And then finally I take that linear combination and add it to the last vector. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1, 6 plus negative 15 is negative 9, and then negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8. That gives me a vector b. We're kind of happy here because the dimensions of b are indeed 1 by 3. At this stage, I can't help but to want to give not only the gift of mathematical content mastery, but also the gift of mathematical problem solving. So I'm going to point us back to the key problem solving questions. I'm going to link this post in the description below. Every time we solve a problem, I like to go through four phases. This comes from George Polya's How to Solve It. Step one is to understand the problem. Step two is to devise a plan. Step three is to carry out the plan. And step four is to look back. We've already done steps one through three on this problem, and I want to look back. One of the first questions we can ask ourselves as reflecting is, can we check our results? In this case, we've done it using pen and paper analysis. I want to check my results in a different way. Specifically, let's use Octave Online. So if we type in Octave, O-C-T-A-V-E, online, this is an online matrix calculator that is compatible with MATLAB. We take that first link and click on it. This gives me the Octave Online command prompt. This is where I actually execute my code. Down here where the little double arrows are is where I'm going to write my executable code. Let's go ahead and enter our data into memory. So A is a matrix. And we're going to say that the first row is negative 3, comma, 4, comma, negative 3. We use comma to delimit columns and semicolons to delimit rows. So let's go down to the next row, and then we're going to have negative 1, comma, 7, comma, 6. And then I input my last two rows as desired and push Enter. This gives me the exact matrix that I'm looking for, and I can check the entries. Yep, that works out. So now let's do x. x is going to be a 4 by 1, 2 in the first row, negative 1 in the second row, 
five in the third row and three in the last row. Now, what I want to do is set B equal to X transpose. The transpose is the single quotation mark right next to the return button. And then I multiply that by A, and notice that the output is one, negative nine, negative eight, which means that I have more confidence that the result that I achieved is the result that I want. In this class, I encourage you to use Octave to do calculations as a way to check your pen and paper analysis. I like to say that if you've done analysis once or twice using pen and paper, that gives you a really strong understanding of what you're doing and from that point forward use Octave all you want to make the calculations easier. We've spent the last seven decades of human history developing calculators so that you can outsource the grunt work of calculation to a computer. Use it please. With that we've solved our problem of multiplying a row vector x transpose by a matrix A where we're given x and we're given A and I want to do a quick reminder at the end of this when I am doing a matrix vector multiplication and my modeling matrix shows up on the right, my algebraic worker shows up on the left, I partition the modeling matrix into rows and I take linear combinations of the rows of that matrix with scalar multiples coming from the vector on the left, that algebraic worker vector. In the matrix column vector multiplication, my algebraic worker shows up on the right, my modeling matrix shows up on the left, that's where I chop my matrix into columns and take linear combinations of the columns. You see the duality there? One of them is linear combinations via columns, the other one is linear combinations via rows. Community challenge for this post, can you come up with an alternate de definition of X transpose times A that depends on a different operation? So not a linear combination operation, but a scalar operation, dot products, and can confirm using that operation that the results that we achieved are the same results that you achieve with your conjecture. I'll leave that as an open invitation, and that's exactly what we're going to explore in the next videos. Thank you so much for your attention, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.